Today we're going to learn about the imperfect in the future tense of the verb sum esse. Before we jump into that, though, let's talk about the verb sum esse fui, to be. First of all, if you remember, this is one of our irregular verbs in Latin. And that's why it only has three principal parts. But there are also some other things about sum esse that we need to remember. The stem for our forms does not come from the infinitive like most of our verbs. Usually we go to the second principal part, drop off our ending, and that's our stem. For the verb sum esse fui, you simply need to memorize your endings for the present, the imperfect, and the future. And also, it's an intransitive or linking verb. So remember, when we use it in a sentence, it does not take a direct object. Instead, if it's going to take an object, it'll take a predicate nominative instead. It will never take an accusative. So, let's start with the imperfect of sum esse. Below are the forms of it. We have eram in the first person singular, eras in the second person singular, erat in the third person singular, eramus in the first person plural, eratus in the second person plural, and erant in the third person plural. So, our verb to be is eram, eras, erat, eramus, eratus, erant in the imperfect. And we can see our meanings here as well. Eram is I was, eras, you were, erat, he, she, or it was, eramus, we were, eratus, you all, plural, were, y'all were, and erat, they were. Once again, sumasse, this is an irregular verb. You're just going to have to memorize these forms. And moving on to the future, once again, the future of sumasse is completely irregular. You're going to have to memorize these forms. So let's go through it. The first person singular is a row. Second person singular is eris. Third person singular is erit. First person plural, erimus. Second person plural, eritus. Third person plural, erunt. And with meanings, ero is I will be, eris, you will be, erit, he, she, or it will be, erimus, we will be, eritus, y'all will be, and erunt, they will be. Now just as with the imperfect assume essay, you're just going to have to memorize these forms of the verb. So make flashcards, rote memorization, whatever it takes to memorize these, you have to know the forms and their meanings. All right, let's practice a little. Below are two sentences for you to translate. Make sure you pay attention to what tense the verb to be is in, but also remember that the position of the verb to be is important, and this will come up as we go over these. So now would be a good time to take this recording and pause it and give yourself a few minutes to work on these, and we'll review when you're done. All right, number one, puer eret weir post multos anos. Here, our verb to be is in between our subject, puer, and our predicate nominative, weir. So we're just going to translate it normally. And this sentence becomes, the boy will be a man, post multos anos, after many years. A good accusative of duration of time. And, number two, erat equus prope portam. Note that here, our verb to be is in the third person, and it's in the first position. So we're going to translate it a little different. We're going to take the subject there. So here we have, there was a horse, prope portum, near the gate. All right. So our takeaways for this lesson are basically you just have to memorize the imperfect in the future tense of sum esse fui and memorize the translations for all of these. Remember, this is our irregular verb, so it's not going to come from the stem, the second principal part, esse, which is the infinitive. These are irregular forms that you need to memorize.